Hi, Dr. Eric Westman here with another episode of Learn with Dr. Westman. I am an author of a recent paper that came out. It's uh, got a bunch of authors, including Will Yancey and myself here at Duke, including David Ludwig at Harvard and Lou Aroni, Arnie Astrup, um, Steve Heimsfield, Ron Krauss, Gary Taubes, Jeff Volick, Kara Ebeling, Walter Willett and others. But it is a paper that's bringing together two paradigms. Here you can see it's called the Carbohydrate Insulin Model, a Physiologic Perspective on the Obesity Pandemic. It's basically bringing together the old calories in, calories out group of people, way of thinking, or paradigm, with the newer carbohydrate insulin model, the hormonal model, of obesity as a philosophical and scientific rationale or hypothesis to be able to be tested or refuted. And so uh, in the low carb world, we've kind of made fun of calories in, calories out as being too simplistic or, or even as ridiculous as saying, you know, why is that restaurant crowded? Well, more people went in than came out. You know, why is someone overweight? Well, more calories went in than came out. It, it's true. It's called a tautology. It's true, but it doesn't tell you why the restaurant's crowded, why someone has taken more calories in than out. And in David Ludwig's primary author role, he said tautologies and other limitations of EBM, meaning these kind of self-evident statements that basically weight gain happens only with a positive energy balance. So basically saying that someone is gaining weight because of calories is about as you know, uh, silly as saying that restaurant's crowded because more people went in than came out. Of course that happened, <laughs> but it was a good service. Is it you know, great food, great drinks, great view? So why do people consume more calories than they expend is really the question. Bringing together the, those limitations of the calories in, calories out model with the newer, well, it's about as new as the 1950s. So a, an old but new theory that carbohydrates drive the blood glucose, blood glucose drives the insulin, insulin makes fat out of that glucose, stores it as fat and locks up the fat so you can't get to it. That's the carbohydrate insulin model or the hormonal model of obesity. So in this kind of a, how should I say, a, a paper of compromise, bringing together the, the old and the new, David Ludwig is masterfully became a, a compromiser and, and uh, appealed to both the uh, uh, elements of, of wanting to put a paper together for hypothesis testing and, and not so. So it's not saying this is the answer. It's saying here are some frameworks to use to refute or, or, or not and get beyond the, the idea that we've solved what causes obesity. Because solving obesity, saying it's about calories in, calories out, is about as helpful and silly as saying more people went in that restaurant than came out, that's why it's crowded. Think about that. <laughs> the other major limitation of the energy balance model is considering children that are going through a growth spurt. So in puberty, children grow and sometimes have voracious appetites. You can't keep enough food in the refrigerator. And they're not growing because they're eating more. They're eating more because they're growing. And it's that growth hormone, the growth spurt that makes them eat more. And if you've ever had a child through adolescence, you will see that it's really kind of uncontrollable. <laughs> so that it's not that the child is growing this way because they're eating more. They're eating more because their body is in a growing state. And that's the same way for those who are growing this way. It's the growth of the tissue, of, of the adipose tissue, sending signals 
to grow this way that makes people eat more. That's the carbohydrate insulin model. And it's really, really important to have this paper. I was glad to be a part of it, and I'm glad to be part of an ongoing discussion among the academics. In my practice, I use carbohydrate restriction or low-carb diets or the carbohydrate insulin model as the framework for my practice, and it works very well. And uh, that's you'll see videos of me teaching that over and over. And our contribution to the academic literature was to basically publish articles going back to the year 2002 on how low-carb diets are effective and safe for, for obesity treatment and diabetes treatment. And so the, our contribution in the academic world is to have published these, uh, these findings. Of course, I built my program and my work on the doctors who came before me, Drs. Atkins, Dr. Eads, Dr. Rosedale, Dr. Bernstein, and they built their practices on doctors before them. It's great that it finally is getting into the academic literature as a straw man to, or woman, to straw person to either refute or to validate. And now that is the mechanistic scientific debate that's going on. You don't have to wait until this is solved in order to make a change in your lifestyle. But if someone tells you calories in, calories out, it's a done deal, say, ah, 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 hang on. It could be the carbs and insulin model is just as valid. And uh, both actually have a role to play in our understanding about helping people uh, in uh, fixing lifestyle of obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, polycystic ovary syndrome, high blood pressure, heartburn, uh, the list goes on and on. So I hope that's helpful. Please um, click on the notifications and click that you like this. Send this to a friend or a neighbor or a, a, a relative. This is a grassroots movement because the powers that be are have their minds in other places. So uh, please pass along this video. I hope it's helpful. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out AdapterLifeAcademy.com.